Hello! Hey guys, um, well, we're back to an Orgo video this time. For those of you who don't know, um, back in November, me and my tutor Rebecca, we made a physics video on uh, circular motion or centripetal motion or forces. If any of you guys are in physics or will be in physics, be sure to check that video out. I'll put an annotation for it right here. So anyways, back to this reaction. It's time to make the Mitsunobu reaction easy for you guys. Uh, this reaction kind of confused me for a long time. Actually, um, I kind of tutored it over the years and like explained the mechanism and the reaction, but it didn't really fully make sense to me. Um, I like taught my students the mechanism, but then this year, I don't know what happened. It's just every single step of the mechanism makes perfect sense to me. So I really uh, want to show you guys um, how I see it now, and that's what we're going to be doing today. And I hope you're ready. Okay, so uh, if you're ready, um, my video is going to change a little bit because I'm going to teach you guys new reactions uh, moving forward uh, through my Orgo Bible style. But let's get back to the Sonoko reaction. Okay, so you're ready. Um, first off, uh, the name, it's, it's the Mitsunobu reaction. Um, how do you recognize it? Well, you're always going to have a primary secondary alcohol. You're always going to see dead. And this might be the only reaction in Orgo 2 that you see with uh, the reagent dead in it. Um, it scares students all the time for some reason, but uh, it's not that bad. Uh, PPH3, triphenylphosphine. It's a phosphorus attached to three phenyl groups, so benzene rings. Uh, it's not that important, you can just leave it as PPH3. And you're always going to have an H nuke, so it's a nucleophile with a hydrogen attached to it. From the reactants and problems I've seen, they've pretty much almost always been a carboxylic acid group <coughs> as the nucleophile, and this uh, carbon chain here can vary. Your professor could put a benzene here, uh, make it a longer chain, but mostly I've seen carboxylic acids. Uh, let me know if you've seen another nucleophile that your professor uses, and tell me in the comments down below so everybody else knows as well. Okay, alright, so that's how to recognize it. That's the name. Now, second, what's the point? What's the point of the Mitsunobu reaction? Well, I need you guys to try this out. Um, let's see if you remember what your professor taught in lecture. Uh, and if you maybe if you have if you haven't learned this reaction, maybe you can just take a guess. All right. So hit pause. We'll come back in a few seconds. All right. Hit pause. Okay, that's the point of the reaction. It replaces the, the alcohol on your secondary alcohol with your nucleophile. And notice that your nucleophile loses the H. Okay, it's just a nucleophile. So the carboxylic acid without the H. And notice the change in dashing wedging. It's very important. And that's the whole point of the Mitsunobu reaction. Anytime you have alcohol that you want to replace with a nucleophile, that will probably be something like this. You did the Mitsunobu reaction. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions, but, um, and this is dead, <coughs> by the way. I just drew it out so we can go through the mechanism. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, if you're wondering why that happens, that's a good question. We'll find out in the mechanism. And hint, hint, there's a step that is going to be SN2. I know also that is why you can't have a tertiary alcohol, meaning an alcohol with a third carbon chain coming off of it, going into this reaction, because as, it, as you go through the reaction mechanism, once you get to the SN2 step, uh, your nucleophile can't do a backside attack because tertiary alcohols are too blocked up on the back, so your nucleophile can't backside attack. So, yeah, only primary or secondary alcohols. All right, so the mechanism. So, first, you're going to use your, you're just going to use these two guys. You're not even going to involve um, your alcohol until later on. Okay, so first, you're going to use your PPH3 this guy, the phosphorus has a lone pair, and that lone pair is going to go ahead and attack one of the nitrogens, like that. Cool. When you attack nitrogen, nitrogen gets overwhelmed with too many bonds, so it's going to kick off this bond right here. All right, to the end. And yeah, do this along with me. If you, um, if you already know it, just guess it, say it. Don't be one step ahead of me, as always, just like how we usually do it. And then when we do this, what happens is, Your phosphorus gets attached, and then you have some charges. So what charges should you have? I'm just going to leave out the parentheses. 
but yeah. What charges should you have? Well, you should have nitrogen got electrons, so negative charge. And then who lost electrons? Phosphorus when you attack. So phosphorus should have a plus charge. Okay. And now this part is it's really cool because there is a really significant purpose behind this. This created this molecule that has both a positive charge and a negative charge, and they both have a function and a mechanism. This, uh, this molecule here is going to help us activate the nucleophile by taking off the H and giving it a negative charge, so it's like strong and ready to attack. And it's also going to lure or trap the alcohol so that the nucleophile can attack it later on. It's really cool. All right. So uh, first, activate the nucleophile. So we're going to bring in our nucleophile. And I'm just going to use purple this time. All right, so here we go. Um, negative charge comes in. All right, negative charge comes in and grabs the H, freeing up the electrons in the bond. So they go over here onto the O, creating what charge? Negative charge. Okay, so that is activating the nucleophile. Oxygen got electrons, so it's negatively charged. And then we still have our dead molecule here. And it's about to participate in its second function, which is what? OK, here we go. All right, this step of the mechanism, can you guess what happens next? Um, well, this is where we actually bring in our, new, our alcohol now. And we're going to use this positive charge to lure it in and trap it. Yeah, it's actually that exciting. He's going to use the oxygen, he's going to attack this positive, just like that. And then we proceed from here. I just rotated the alcohol after it attached. Uh, does it still have its positive charge, the phosphorus? No, it does not. Why? It got electrons from who? From the oxygen. So the oxygen is positive. And then, so then what happens? Well, at this point here, uh, you need a base. Uh, and in the mechanism, it's a little bit unclear, but it's pretty much any base. It could be this guy, like extra extra nucleophile that's negatively charged already. It could be another alcohol. It could be, yeah, you don't need to worry about this part unless your professor gives you specifically um, a specific molecule to take off the H. But we're going to use this base to grab the hydrogen. And this part's going to be weird, OK? Freeing up the electrons in this bond. And we don't give it to the O, though. Instead of giving it to the O, we're going to bring that bond here and create a double bond with the phosphorus. And I know that's kind of weird. but that make, actually makes perfect sense because that's going to create a phenomenal leading group, allowing us to do an SN2 in the next step. All right? So remember, PPH3 double bond to oxygen is a great leading group. Um, going back to here, when you do this, the phosphorus gets overwhelmed with too many bonds, so it's actually going to let go of this bond here. Boom. Releasing the dead molecule off. So at this point here, the dead molecule is actually all gone. Um, floating around, you don't need to worry about it. Right? And at this point here, this bond's gone too. And um, we still have a charge though. And it's oxygen. Oxygen still has that positive charge. Why? Well, it didn't gain any electrons. It, its electrons just transferred over. Yeah. Okay. All right. And at this point here, like I was saying earlier, this is a phenomenal leaving group. This is a great leaving group. LG, not the phone company. Yeah, it's a great leading group, and if you if you're learning this reaction, you probably already learned the SOCl2 or PBr3 reaction, or tosylate the sulfonate sulf esters. Hopefully, those are not just words coming at you. But um, the purpose of all those reactions you learned before this is to turn alcohol into a good leading group. Well, this is really similar. You've, we've created a great leading group here. Uh, we're just gonna have a slide go through with uh, some of the other better leading groups. Actually, all right, one second. Um, I'm going to compare this 
and make it analogous to what I was saying before. Like, does this look familiar to you guys at all? PBR2? This is like the last step of the PBR3 reaction. This is a great leaving group. Um, and then tosylate or mesylate. And just trust when I say that this is a good leaving group. Okay. Um, just trying to make some connections to other reactions that you guys learned. All right, well, yeah. Here's, our, here's when our activated nucleophile comes in and simply does a backside attack, SN2, kicks off our great leading group, and we have our products. Voila! Check, 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 and we'll check technically, because I went over that at the beginning. Tricky exceptions. Okay, that makes sense. Hopefully it did. We also have a P, P, H, 3. The phosphorus is double bonded to the O. Yeah, not so pretty, but whatevs. Okay, that's the Mitsunobu reaction. All right. Hopefully you guys uh, can appreciate it a little more now. Um, let me know if anything's not clear. If you want me to re-explain any steps, uh, I guess you can ask me in the comments down below. But let's just recap real quickly. All right. Try to try to write down a, maybe when you do the mechanism, like not only do this, but for each step, write the purpose out in words so you can better remember. Let's do that right now, actually. So first step, we're going to combine our PPH3 and dead to create two charges that are going to have two very important functions for us. All right, the negative charge is going to uh, go into play first. It's going to activate our nucleophile or H nuke by pulling off the H, freeing up the electrons in the bond to go to the oxygen, making it negative, activating the nucleophile. Then, the positive charge's purpose is to, on the phosphorus, is to lure the alcohol in and trap it so that then a base, uh, any base that's in your solution, is going to come, pull the H, free up the electrons in this bond to create a phenomenal leaving group. Okay. So then, once you have your leaving group, you can do your SN2 because you have your activating nucleophile. So it just comes in, the backside attack, and you're done. Mitsunobu reaction made easy. All right, so um, thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, make sure you like it down there and tell your friends. If I didn't say this earlier already, if you're interested in just helping support my videos, um, I do accept donations because um, I guess my videos aren't really funded by anybody right now. Um, if you are interested, you can Donate or help support me at orgomadeeasy.org. I have a tab for donations. And um, yeah, tell your friends. That's another way to help support me and my videos. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas for videos, any questions, ways to improve. I'm all ears. And I'm also a private tutor, and I get my ideas and my inspiration comes from you guys when I work with students. And I see how you think, see what you struggle through, and then it gets me excited and it reminds me of how I thought when I was a student. And then that's what spurs up these ideas for these videos. So if you're interested in tutoring, feel free to reach out to me. All, all the information is on my website, orgomadeeasy.org. And so yeah, thanks for watching. Guys, um, I'll see you in another video. Okay.